lovely interwebby people. And you'll never guess what. I turned 21. Well, Mac has taught this YouTube stuff, then I guess I'll just go and do my taxes. Well, that was dull. Anyway, my lovely family decided to indulge my little cute baby face by buying me a new camera! As well as this awesome ass Beemo cake. So, like I said in my last video, this camera's gonna let you see my ugly mug a lot better and hopefully improve the quality of the videos that I bring to you! So, now that that's out of the way, I suppose I should probably try and repay my parents for buying me this by actually using it to make a review. And it's going to be awful because this is a completely ad hoc review and I have no game footage and I only started the game yesterday. So, what game am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do Mario & Luigi Dream Team Bros. Because this is the Mario Marathon, so I may as well do a Mario game. So, what exactly is Mario & Luigi Dream Team Bros? Well, it's the next in line for the Mario & Luigi games, and it's also a spiritual successor to games like the Superstar Saga and Mario RPG, which are all really, really great games. So, basically, you play as Mario & Luigi. Who would have guessed? So, the brothers head off to Pilo Island, spelled P-I-L-L-I-O. I think it's supposed to say Pilo. It's not really spelled the same. So, when you arrive on Pilo Island, you find out that the original inhabitants, the Pilos, <laughs> have all been missing for the last 1,000 years. Where could they be? No one knows. But luckily, Luigi's a massive narcoleptic and falls asleep on what is essentially a stone pillow. Now. My pillows are made of feathers, and sometimes they're uncomfortable to lie on. I don't know why he likes to just fucking drop out on whatever he can. But, luckily, this opens a gateway to the dream world in which Mario can jump in and start saving all of these pillow folk. But, a downside to that is the big bad Bat King. Uh, I forgot his name. Antasma! I fucking had it written down. Should always read my script before I start recording videos. Basically, he comes along, he's trapped in the dream world with the pillow folk. So, when the brothers go in to save all the pillow folk, he gets out. And. But you can't guess what happens. Yes! He kidnaps Princess Peach. Because everyone who is evil in the Mushroom Kingdom feels a need to steal this woman. I don't know why. Why? Just do something different. Just blow up part of the Mushroom Kingdom. Fucking seal off all the warp pipes. Do something other than take this woman away. <coughs> Is there nothing more evil you can do? Is that literally just the limit to what Nintendo can allow in a Mario franchise? It's, it's mind-boggling. It really is. So, anyway. After the brothers go into the dream world to rescue Princess Peach, they find out that when the pillows tried to trap Antasm in this dream world, he broke what was known as the Nightmare Stone, which unfortunately trapped every other pillow inside with him. It's gotta suck a bit. So the brothers have to go through the dream world and rescue all of the pillows, which is it's a nice change. It makes it there's a different villain. So I mean Bowser's not oh no way. No, ba Bowser is in the game. He shows up literally 10 minutes in and it becomes another Mario game where Bowser just wants to kidnap the princess and Mario Brothers need to stop Bowser but now Bowser's being powered up by Antasm so Bowser's gonna kidnap the princess and it's all gonna go the same way that every Mario game always does I'm not complaining, I like Mario games, but the thing is, the past Mario & Luigi games have been quirky and fun. I mean, in Partners in Time, you had the Shroom Queen, who was just an evil woman from space. And then in Bowser's Inside Story, you, you played as Bowser as well. Bowser was part of your team, which is one of the elements I love that they took from the older Super Mario RPG. They made it different, it's quirky, it's fun, and I had so high hopes for this one because I played the other ones and I thought, yes, it's going to be slightly different, but it's not. They brought Bowser back, 
and he's an asshole, same as always. All he wants to do is steal Princess Peach. Luckily, Aunt hasm has got other plans which involve stealing the Dream Stone, which is the counterpart to the Nightmare Stone, which would allow him to grant a wish and basically enslave everyone again. So, he's got Aunt hasm pulling him in a different direction, but as far as I played, it looks like it's just going to go back to where it was before. I'll, I'm still going to play it. I'm still going to play it all the way through. And then I'll probably put a video up apologising, saying oh, I was wrong after this. But this is what happens when you make a review that you've literally played half of the game. You don't know how it ends. You don't know how it's going to pan out. You just... You just do. So, aside from the story, how does the actual gameplay work? Well, basically, in the main part of the game, you control both of the brothers at the same time, using A to make Mario interact with things, and B to make Luigi interact with things. Now, this is a fun mechanic, and there's a lot of different ways that you can use this, but for some of the more tricky platformer parts, it gets a little bit tedious when you jump over a gap and Luigi will fall down, and then drag Mario down with him, or you'll overshoot and Mario will fall down, and drag Luigi down with him. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad to deal with. I mean, it's been this way ever since the Superstar Saga, and it's a nice fresh way to control the brothers, save just side-scrolling straight through a level. Uh, the other part of the game is obviously in the dream world, uh, where you control solely Mario and then this dream reincarnation of Luigi, because Luigi's asleep in the real world. So it's on a complete 2D uh, screen as opposed to the 3D environments of the rest of the game. And you can actually interact with the background by twiddling with Luigi's moustache to stretch out branches or slow down time. And it's, it's a really, really fun mechanic. And it, it does add another level to the game and I really, really enjoy it. As for the battling, it's back to the standard turn-based of the RPGs that we know and love which is always good, and harking back to the Mario RPG games, they have the timed hits, which really makes you feel a lot more involved in the actual battling, as opposed to just pick a move, pick a move, pick a move, go. It's more, right now I have to time this, and if I shoot the brothers out of a cannon, I have to remember the order that they come out, and then it'll switch around, so I have to tap in the correct button presses. In order to get maximum damage, each enemy has, say, spikes on their heads so you can't jump on them, you have to hit them with a hammer. And it is it is a really nice fresh take on how to actually play a Mario game. Admittedly, it is the same old rehash as the other Mario and Luigi games and the Superstar Sagas before that, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Being slightly quirky in the Mario world genuinely lends itself to being a very, very good way to make a game. So, how does the game actually look? The pixel art of the brothers and all the characters in the game are so, so crisp compared to the older Mario and Luigi games. I mean, in, even in Bowser's Inside Story, if Mario was stood on the diagonal, his eyes would all be weird shapes and it wouldn't quite look right. But I don't know how they've decided to do it in the new game. Obviously it's just down to the increased screen resolution of the 3DS. But the actual animations are so fluid, it's like watching one of the old school hand-drawn Disney cartoons. It's really, really nice to look at. And the 3D environments that they're in, it merges so well with the actual art style. Which is one of the main reasons why you should play this game. It is literally just beautiful. As for the 3D, whilst you're in the main world just traversing about, it really helps to enhance the experience and make the world feel more deep. But during the battles, it gets disorientating, especially when you're using some of the special moves that require a bit of precision. Some special moves that helps, like the 3D shell, it makes it easier to tell when the actual shell is coming back to the characters. But other ones, such as the Mario Cannon, when the Mario Bros fire off into the distance, and you've got the 3D on, you can see nothing at the back of the screen. It just makes it too complicated to actually be able to do it. So, if you're going to buy this game and you're going to play it, I'd say either if you can put up with switching 
the 3D on and off between the paddles do that, but having the 3D off is no massive loss. It's still a beautiful game without that, and it hurts your eyes less when you've got it off, so you may as well just play it without the 3D on. Same as pretty much any 3DS game that I've played so far. I really want the 3D to work on it, but it never does. It's always just something slightly off. I don't know why, but yeah, just turn the 3D off, it's better. Now, on to the sound design. So basically, they've used a lot of new music, which is great and it really fits the tone, but the quality of the sound design really comes into play when you hear some of the old school remixes. So the original Mario theme tune's in there, but it's been remixed to fit in with the new Pillow Island tune. And it really helps to blend the old games with the new games. And it just it sounds really, really nice. Uh, all of the actual communication in the game's done via text, so no voice actors. Well, it's a Nintendo game, so I wouldn't really expect there to be many voice actors. Uh, the brothers actually communicate, they're the only ones that actually communicate with sound. This is not necessarily legible or audible. I don't know what the word is. Basically, as they've done in all the past RPGs, they speak in gibberish with animations to back up what they're saying. And this really just, it's got a nice comedic feel to it and you, you really get a grip of how the brothers interact with each other through they've got their own language which admittedly is a slightly racist kind of Italian but it's theirs and just the feel of how they interact with each other really helps the game through and then you've got all of the dream world music as well which sounds fantastic although the battle theme for the first dream world you go into does sound like some rave version remix of Neon Cat. Which I'm okay with, because Pop Tart Rainbow Kitty Flying is great. Yeah! So, the overall verdict for Mario Dream Team Bros is around a 7 out of 10. Now, admittedly, that's not the highest mark I could have given it. I would have hoped to have seen the game without Bowser in it, or with Bowser fighting alongside you rather than joining up with the bad guy and ultimately trying to kidnap Princess Peach. But this is a very, very good, very, very fun game to play. It's probably one of the better games for the 3DS that's come out in 2013. Saying that, I've not played Luigi's Mansion yet. I really want to. That seems like it's probably going to be one of the better ones. Uh, but yeah. I would definitely advise picking this game up, it's a lot of fun, and if you've got a lot of free time, it's definitely one for you. So thanks for watching, if you want to voice your opinions on how bad this review is compared to what future reviews are, and even what past videos have been because I have no footage and I'm literally just talking to you like a pillock, then leave that down below. You can click the like button and the subscribe button and also go to my channel and watch the other videos. So that was an awkward pause at the end there. I was going to just say goodbye, but I shall do it now. Bye bye. Can you? This is the case. This is the case for the game. I dropped it. I dropped the case for the game. Caught it though. It's always a plus.